back your homes or restore your dead to life. But perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Hey everyone, episode 1 of season 7 just aired and there's a lot to go over. If you haven't seen it, go watch it and then come back here for the breakdown. Anyway, let's get into it. The episode starts out with Walder Frey addressing his house during a feast. The truth is, it's Arya who's acting as Walder Frey, and she poisons everyone's wine. What's important about this is this scene proves that Arya can kill anyone and use their face without being at the House of Black and White. This ability can come in handy now that we know she's traveling to King's Landing. Moving on, we catch up with the White Walker army for the first time this season, and in their group were a few undead giants. We know from the book series that the others have all kinds of creatures on their side, like giant spiders as big as hounds. So having undead giants isn't too surprising. I was waiting to see if Hodor was part of the crowd. I'm not sure I spotted him. Next up, Bran and Mira pass through the wall, arriving at Castle Black. The big question is can the White Walkers follow Bran now that he's crossed the barrier? At Winterfell, Jon sits down with his fellow northerners and gets caught up in a power struggle with Sansa. It seems she feels more capable of running the north than Jon. Baelish also looks to be on Sansa's side, no surprise there. Jon orders the wildlings to man the wall and protect it from the dead. East Watch by the Sea is their focus. It's the most eastern castle on the wall, in fact it's where the wall meets the water. Next we find Cersei and Jaime at King's Landing. The Queen is having a map of Westeros painted on the floor. The Lannister twins talk about not having enough men to take on their enemies. This leads into an unlikely alliance between Euron and the Crown. Cersei tells her brother that Euron is looking for a queen, so be on the lookout for some bad blood between Jaime and Euron. Oh, and one thing that stuck out, Cersei mentions Tyrion by referring to him as our little brother. This is a subtle nod to the Voloncar prophecy. Cersei believes Tyrion will strangle her to death because as a girl she was told the Voloncar or little brother will drain the life from her body. Jaime is also considered her little brother, just a younger twin. In Old Town we catch up with Sam. He's cleaning and performing his duties as a maester in training when we are introduced to Archmaester Marwyn. He says something interesting. Every winter that's come has ended. He also says, we are this world's memories. Maesters spread the world's knowledge through books and writings. It's the only way we can know what happened before. That's why I believe this quote may be a hint towards the popular theory, Sam is the narrator. It's a theory that suggests Samuel Tarly is narrating the events of A Song of Ice and Fire and we learn of what happens through his own recounting of it. Sam steals a key to gain access to a restricted section of the Citadel. He grabs a few books and takes them to read with Gilly and baby Sam. Gilly is looking at Legends of the Long Night when she flips to a page that talks about Azor Ahai. Sam is flipping through a book that's discussing Dragonglass. We even come across a page that has the cat's paw blade that Littlefinger owns. If you read the text, it's talking about how dragons would breathe fire and melt stone into a molten and malleable form. The Valyrians would use it to build their monuments and buildings. Now this is incredible information because the secrets of Valyria's architecture and magical bindings were lost in the doom. Sam might actually be able to learn how to create Valyrian steel or something else that could be of use in the Great War. The Hound is traveling with the Brotherhood without banners. They come across the farmhouse that Arya and the Hound stayed at and sure enough, just like Clegane had thought, the man and his daughter did not survive. During a discussion with Beric and Thoros, Sandor stared into the flames and saw thousands of dead marching near Eastwatch. This is a look into the future 
and what he saw was probably this scene from one of the trailers where John and Beric Dondarrion are up on the ledge fighting off White. Also, there was a lot of talk as to why the Lord of Light keeps bringing Beric Dondarrion back. What do you think is the reason why? We see Sam in another part of the Citadel and Jorah pokes his arm out. It's completely covered in grayscale. So for everyone wondering where Jorah was going to travel to attempt to cure his disease, it was the Citadel. And finally, Daenerys arrives at Dragonstone. Her dragons are huge, the castle is massive, and the painted table is still holding up. Danny asks Tyrion, shall we begin? And the episode ends. What's next for the Targaryen Alliance is a strategy on conquering Westeros. Tyrion will plan the conquest, and Danny will send her armies out to war accordingly. That's going to do it for this breakdown. More videos will be coming out soon, and as always, have a great day, take care, and I will see you tomorrow.